Today, I'm going to be talking you through how you can create a standout CV and be successful in your future medical career. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, then a massive welcome to you. My name is Dr. Baptiste. I am a portfolio GP or a GP with a portfolio career. If this is the first time that you're visiting my channel or watching one of my videos, then why not consider subscribing because I have so many useful videos to support you on your medical journey. Whether you're an aspiring medic, medical student or junior doctor, I will have something on my channel of value to you. If you do subscribe, which I hope you do, then make sure you turn the notification bell on so you don't miss out on any of my new videos. If you enjoyed the video then make sure you give it a thumbs up as always. So if you've watched my video on how to become a GP and how to pass the MSRA exam which is the exam to get into GP training you will know that these are the requirements to get onto GP training and to become a GP. However, many of you have asked me to do a video to talk you through how you can carve out and create a CV that will really help you when you're applying to GP training and to become a GP. So I have compiled 10 things that I thought would help you in creating that standout CV. Even if you don't want to become a GP, the tips I provide you with in the video will definitely help your CV regardless. So tip number one, work experience. Now, if you're an aspiring medic, then of course you know that you have to get some work experience. I know it may be difficult, but there are some virtual work experience placements by the RCGP or Royal College of General Practitioners and Brighton and Sussex Medical School. Even if you're a medical student, and you have rotated in general practice, maybe you haven't rotated in general practice, but even if you have, I would still suggest getting some work experience out of the medical school curriculum. Now, the reason why you should do this is because you need to learn as much as you can about this career and then add this to your CV. I've already had medical students ask me if they can shadow me during my day-to-day -day work as a GP, and this shows great initiative. So the more work experience you can get, the better. Now, when you're on your placement, whether aspiring medic or current medical student or even junior doctor I would suggest that you network and you really get to know the staff in the practice also understand the structure of general practice I don't just mean the structure of the general practice the surgery I mean the wider structure of general practice in itself I would also understand the practicalities of this career and it's not just for general practice but any career any professional that you are shadowing you need to understand the practicalities so by this I mean how is this going to impact your work in life, your work-life balance, for example. I would also strongly suggest understanding the services that are provided by the practice and within the surrounding area. How does this compare to other areas? Now, when you leave, make sure you write down what it was that you have learned. This is really good to keep a record for future reference, but also it helps to really cement what you've learned so that you don't forget it later on. Now, of course, if you're an aspiring medic, this is great for your personal statement. But like I said, even if you're a medical student or junior doctor, doctor this is good for reflection. Now of course as a doctor you will have a portfolio in which you can write some of this down. Now tip number two is to understand key terms. If you want me to do a video on this I'm more than happy to do so because I do think it's something that is not really understood by many medics and even doctors. When I say key terms I mean things like CCGs, clinical commissioning groups, cough targets, primary care networks and the various types of contracts. Now this applies to hospital posts as well. When you understand these terms, think about how you can demonstrate that understanding on your CV. The first thing I would suggest you do is to undertake an audit or a quip or quality improvement project. So what is an audit? So an audit is a process used by healthcare professionals to assess, evaluate and improve the care of patients in a systematic way. So what an audit does is it measures the current practice to the best practice or what the standard should be. Now, an audit does take some time, so you may consider doing a quip, which is much shorter and usually does take less time than an audit and trying to complete the audit cycle. If you want more information about an audit or a quip, I will leave a link in the description box below for further reading. 
My next tip is getting published. I have a whole video on how to get published and make sure you check that video out. But publications will definitely help you stand out. I know many people have many publications. So really you need to first get a publication so you can even the playing field. And number two, think about the type of publication that you're after in order for you to actually stand out. Publications, of course, help your CV. They also help with your writing experience and they build your credibility. Now, of course, if you're looking to get into general practice, you will want to uh, get something published in primary care or uh, related to general practice. Tip number five, this would be courses, of course, related to general practice, related to primary care. By attending courses and conferences, you will, of course, gain a greater understanding of general practice and you will also show your commitment to this career. Now, the BMJ Live Careers Fair is a very good place to start. They have a careers fair every single year, so you should definitely attend that. It's free to attend. The Royal Society of Medicine also have many courses and events throughout the year related to general practice, so keep an eye on the page. And I have left a link in the description box below for you to check out. Now, of course, it's difficult to do the next thing I'm going to talk about, which is networking. Of course, things are online. Um, it is possible to do networking online, but you may find it a little bit more difficult during the pandemic. And number six is understanding finances, business and politics. These are imperative to understanding a career in general practice and to your future career, whether in general practice or otherwise. Honestly, the sooner you start to understand these things, the better it is for you in the long term. These aspects are not taught formally in the medical school curriculum. So you're going to have to do your own research outside of medical school. If you want to know more about finances, I have two videos talking about money. The first one is how much do GPs earn? And the second one is how much do junior doctors and consultants earn? So number seven is to join and get involved in societies, whether that's general practice societies or otherwise. Of course, if you want to be a GP, then you'd want to get involved in a general practice society. If you're at school and there isn't one, then maybe you can create one. But when you get involved in these societies, of course, you'll understand more about a career in general practice, but you should really get involved in the organisation and the running of the society, whether that's the financial aspects, whether that's organising events. Ideally, you should have some kind of leadership role. This will definitely help you build on skills, but it will also help your CV stand out. Number eight competitions, awards and prizes. These will definitely help your CV stand out from the crowd. Perhaps you could write an essay with general practice in mind and submit that into some kind of competition or to get an award. Now, winning awards within and outside of medicine will definitely help your CV and definitely add to your credibility. Now, I've left a link to a page on the Royal Society of Medicine's website where they have an award in primary care. Number nine is upskill, whether that's a BSc, so you may undertake an intercalated BSc during medical school, whether you've done a BSc before and you want to then do a master's in something, anything that you do to upskill and to get an additional qualification is definitely going to enhance your CV. Now, I would urge you to think outside of the box here. Can you do something in leadership, management or even business? In general practice, if you've watched one of my previous videos, you will know that if you want to become a GP with a specialist interest, you have to undertake take a diploma so I would always consider a diploma as well. Now the reason upskilling is very good especially when you're applying for any career but in general practice especially is because when you apply for a job or when you accept a job offer you can negotiate and I would urge you to negotiate. So if you are a GP with a specialist interest in reproductive medicine, in cardiology then you have something additional to offer to the practice and so this is something that you can use to your advantage. I I would also include here online modules and courses. Although they may not be a diploma or a BSc, they can still add to your CV. Now, if you're an aspiring medic or medical student, you may think that some of the courses available or online modules are too advanced. But actually, if you have a basic understanding of biology, chemistry, and of course, as a medical student, a little bit more, you will definitely be equipped to at least understand 90% of that module. And you actually can do further reading on the back of that module. Now, if you want to get started in academia, I would definitely suggest applying to the academic GP program. 
Of course, it's very competitive, like with the foundation program, the academic foundation program. So I would get started with writing publications and making your CV stand out now using the tips above. But of course, if you do get onto the academic GP program, this will further enhance your career in academia, in research and in teaching. So my above 10 points will definitely help boost your CV. But more importantly, it will help you have a strong understanding of a career in general practice and further enhance and improve your existing skills. I have loads of videos about general practice, so make sure you check those videos out if you haven't already. So I hope that was useful for you. I hope you can now boost your CV. Let me know if you found that video useful in the comment section below. And of course, give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you haven't subscribed, then why not consider subscribing? I have loads of useful videos for you to support you on your medical career journey. I will see you in my next video.